How wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video, we're going to be discussing some of the new observations out of James Webb Space Telescope of an unusual distant galaxy that potentially represents the first ever detection of a very mysterious type of a star known as the Population 3 star. Or to be more specific, we're going to be discussing a detection of a galaxy that seems to be made entirely out of first stars in the entire universe. And so let's talk about this in a little bit more detail, but let me first explain exactly what these population stars are and why detecting these stars is one of the main missions for the James Webb. And here all of this connects to the idea known as metallicity, the astronomical concept that basically defines elements in the universe as either metals or not metals. And in astronomy, there are only two non-metals, hydrogen and helium. With everything else after hydrogen and helium, basically being referred to as metals. And though maybe not the best name to represent all of these elements, in essence what this means is that some elements, like hydrogen and helium, existed since the beginning of the universe. But everything after this, so things like carbon, oxygen, and pretty much most of the things on the elemental table, was actually created as a result of astrophysical processes. So basically everything from carbon to iron and gold. And over time, as the universe evolved, the fraction of metals compared to non-metals increased. So basically, even though initially there was mostly hydrogen and helium, as various stars were born and as supernova happened, and basically as the universe became enriched in a lot of additional elements, the entire universe started to become more metallic and chemically complex. And so in astronomy, this concept of metallicity is super important. But it's especially important when it comes to trying to figure out the star's age and the evolutionary process in regards to stars, and to basically find out how different types of stars evolved from one to another. And based on this metallicity concept, today in astronomy, all stars are divided into three different types. Population 1, 2, and 3. And while stars like our sun are basically some of the youngest stars and contain some of the highest amount of metallic elements, so essentially they contain a lot of stuff that's not hydrogen and helium, implying that they were formed after many, many supernova happened in the past. For example, for the Sun, it's actually believed that at least 40 supernova happened to create the amount of metals we observe in various solar emissions. And so when we look at the star and we discover that it's a population 1 star, or essentially a star with high metallicity, we also know that it's most likely going to have a planetary system along with potentially terrestrial planets. Naturally, because planets like Earth are made out of a lot of these metallic elements. As a matter of fact, Earth is composed of approximately 90 chemical elements, actually being mostly made out of oxygen and silicon, and not hydrogen and helium. With Earth's core also containing a lot of iron, which is one of the end products for a lot of different supernova. And so for planetary sciences, population 1 stars are usually the most exciting. Then we have population 2 stars, basically the stars that eventually created population 1 stars, like our sun, and the stars that do contain fewer metals, and are usually much much older, but also obviously do contain some elements that are not hydrogen and not helium. Today most of the red dwarf stars are actually population 2 stars, but the more massive population 2 stars resulted in supernova and eventually produced stars like our sun. But then there is the third population that we've never seen anywhere, and that's the mysterious population three stars, I guess the grandparents or the progenitors of everything. And these would be stars containing no metals, because these would be the first stars to appear and would be very likely extremely different from anything we've ever seen. Now based on a lot of simulations, these stars are expected to be super massive, very bright and very hot. Basically blue hydrogen helium stars, possibly several hundred times more massive than the sun, and very likely only existing for maybe one or two million years. Which as a result means that it would be extremely difficult to actually capture them with a telescope, because their lifespan is not very long, and because we're mostly going to be seeing the leftover gas after the supernova, or possibly seeing population 2 stars that formed from all of this gas. And so based on a lot of different computer simulations and very detailed simulations, researchers essentially worked out what we should be detecting if we ever find them, and what these stars are most likely going to be producing in terms of the actual emission lines. And while in the last few years there actually have been some hints of these stars, or at least their remnants, in a few different galaxies. For example, a few years back we've discussed the detection of potential gas produced by these stars, and here this was basically gas that was very likely produced as a result of massive supernova, which implied that we're seeing what happened after these stars exploded, or that we basically missed these stars by just a few thousand or a few million years. 
You can learn about these discoveries in some of the previous videos or in some of the studies in the description. But this is basically what the scientists kept discovering over and over. Either remnants or obscure signs that these stars potentially existed, but no exact detections yet. But approximately a year ago, we discussed this study based on the observations from GNZ11, or the previous record holder for one of the farthest galaxies ever found, where scientists discovered the telltale signs of these unusual stars. Here there was what's known as the Hell line, or technically helium-2 line, which is a type of an emission usually produced by extremely hot helium. And here this could only be explained if this gas was strongly ionized by something super bright and super powerful. And it was actually located right here in the halo of the galaxy. And whatever this was, it was at least 500 times more massive than the Sun, which at least in theory resembled the mass of these hypothetical population 3 stars. And though once again not the exact observation, and just the hints of these stars, this observation once again confirmed that the theories in this case might be correct after all. And well now, approximately a year after, in 2025, we get a new study that potentially discovers even better evidence from a completely different galaxy. Reported by Fujimoto and his team in a study you see right here, and this is based on a survey using James Webb Space Telescope known as GLIMPSE. And this survey contained two barely visible galaxies that researchers discovered were kind of unique and somewhat unusual. Unusual in a sense that they actually contain all of the parameters predicted by these population 3 star theories. And though one of the galaxies was just a candidate and the observations were not perfect, the other galaxy, known as Glimpse 16403, turned out to be super exciting. Exciting because this is the first time we've seen anything like this. First of all, this was an extremely compact galaxy. It's only approximately 140 to 150 light years across and technically resembles some kind of a globular cluster or an extremely early galaxy growing really fast. But much more importantly, it actually contained all three main features for population 3 stars. First of all, it had a very strong hydrogen alpha emission line. It also contained something known as the Balmer jump. And most importantly, it seemed to contain no dust and no additional elements indicating metals. In other words, if we actually compare this to the model or the prediction for population 3 stars, this galaxy was almost a perfect fit. But intriguingly, this galaxy existed when the universe was already 825 million years old. So this was actually closer and younger than the previously discussed candidate GNZ11. But because this galaxy contained very powerful hydrogen and helium emissions, and no signs of any metallic emissions, there was really no way to interpret this except for a galaxy with these population 3 stars producing huge amounts of luminosity and essentially stars that are probably going to be exploding very soon and producing additional elements. But as of right now, all of the stars in this galaxy seem to be pretty young, less than 5 million years old, with a total mass of all stars only being approximately 100,000 solar masses. So this is actually a really small galaxy, and even small for a typical global cluster, suggesting that this is a galaxy that seems to be forming out of some kind of a primordial gas in what seems to be the middle of nowhere. And though it's still possible that this is just some kind of a metal poor galaxy, or even some kind of a black hole or an active galactic nucleus, so far these are just alternative explanations, and the best explanation based on the emissions seems to be that this is indeed population 3 stars and not something else. And so whatever is happening in this galaxy is definitely going to be discussed in a lot of future studies because this is actually super exciting. We've never seen such a primordial galaxy ever before, and this could basically represent some kind of a really early seed for some of the future galaxies where all of these stars, as they go supernova and as they produce a lot of new elements and a lot of additional emissions, continuously enrich the region around themselves and possibly eventually grow larger and larger as more gas falls in and as this galaxy collides with additional galaxies. So for all we know, this is basically the first ever detection of a primordial baby galaxy. Literally a galaxy that's just a few million years old and was just created. But we need to have more observations and additional work before this galaxy and the additional candidate can be confirmed. Although assuming that this is correct and assuming that this is indeed population 3 stars, this would suggest that one of the primary missions for the James Webb has officially been completed. Discovering these stars and studying them is essentially one of the main reasons this telescope exists. And because this is such a grand discovery, here the researchers also end their paper on a somewhat philosophical note, basically reminding us that only a hundred years ago, cosmologists finally discovered that the universe existed and galaxies like Andromeda and Triangulum were actually separate galaxies 
and not part of the Milky Way. We've actually talked about this very recently in one of the videos in the description, but back in 1925, Edwin Hubble and a few other astronomers officially confirmed that the universe was much, much bigger. And now, 100 years later, we're talking about discovering some of the first galaxies at literally the edge of the universe, which is kind of mind-blowing. And so we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are some confirmations or maybe additional explanations. But until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.